So we're doing this as a way of dealing with a, an incoming threat, but also we can see how uh, grabs come out of uh, physical interaction. So if we say that a grab is something that's incidental to the movement, it might be somebody who's trying to grab you to pull you in, it might be that you've already engaged and they grabbed you because you've got engaged into, in this uh, physical interaction. And we can see how it develops from there. So we're going to show the Yuki from a couple of different grab positions. So we'll bring uh, Steve in. Okay, so let's take this idea as a, as a wrist grab first of all. Okay, so we've got our wrist grab position here. We, again, we've got to think about what the threat is aside from that grab position here. So we're going to lengthen, use the distraction technique. I'm going to turn my hand over, as in that hikate position, because I want to lengthen and expose the elbow, uh, the elbow crease. So I'm going to hit the elbow crease, and I'm going to travel back up into my agyuki. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? So again, from here, so we've got that grab to come on, we've got to come on here, this is my movement through. So I shift in. I never stay static. So grabs come on, I'm going to lengthen and turn. So notice, you know, don't forget, if somebody grabs you, they're going to be trying to pull you in. So if they're trying to pull you in, so for me to try and go the opposite way, it makes no sense. So what I want to do is I'm going to use my body to create that opening. So I use my distraction technique, I hit the elbow crease, and I then strike back up underneath the jawline. We want to remember that it's not straight up. If I sink down and I slide up, I'm going to engage the shoulder. So I'm going to hit, bounce off it, and then fire everything back up into the neck and jawline. Um, okay, so if we think about that from a point of view, what's the side on, on about grabs? Okay, so Steve's tried to punch me off the lead hand. Okay, so now I'm in this position. From here, he's likely to grab. So he's grabbed the forearm, or he's grabbed the wrist, or he's grabbed the shoulder. I might have negated the punch coming in, but from there it becomes a, a grappling situation because you've got hold of it. So grabs are really quite common. Um, so we've got that sense of grabs come on, so we can pop, and boom, here, yeah, that's my movement. Now, Remember we said that this hand leads to this hand leads to everything else. If we've got the, the grabs come on, he's trying to hit me with the other hand. If I haven't got this bit, the hand's coming in, then I still do the same thing here. I keep my head down, I can use my head, I can use my other techniques. Okay, so again we've got that grabs come on, I've got pop, and punch bang here, this is my movement. So a nice strong line for a head bump. Okay. We show that wrist, we've got an extraction, punch is coming in, we've got a cover, we've got our head. So make sure when you do your ABU you you're not lifting your chin. Press away from the crown, let the chin sink in. Grabs come on, boom, here, pop, this is my movement. Again, I've got knee strikes, here I've got catches and all sorts of things to potentially finish it. But this is the basic level, entry level technique. So, if we tend to say, okay, that's a wrist grab, what happens if they grab the shoulder or grab the lapel? This is the lapel grab. The lapel grab basically does the same thing, but whereas he's already holding the wrist on the first bit, here, because he's holding it, I don't want him to let go, so I'm going to cover it. I can even strike it, that's absolutely fine, but I want to stop that from going anywhere. So I still use my distraction technique the same way, and I exit the same way as well. So distraction, hit here. So we have this, this lengthens the arm, this drops them back in, and we fire up to the forearm. Uh, those who like uh, additional techniques, we come from here, bang, hit with the shoulder, come up, hit the forearm, strike on the inside. Our distraction technique, okay, we have our drop, we have our hip. We have our distraction technique. Drop hip with the shoulder. Come up, hip with the forearm. Strike with the knee, etc., etc., etc. Okay. We said that if that back hand's coming in, we want to make sure boom, we've got a nice strong line to attack. So I'd use the head butt here. You don't have to, but don't forget, this is going to stop their head flying forwards. But if there's any mistiming. If I put my head up, they catch me by accident, that's going to be bad news for me, not for them. Might be bad news for both of us, actually. But that's not really the case. That comes from the grabs. If we look at a double lapel grab, 
Now remember generally when somebody grabs, they don't grab with both hands at the same time. What they'll do is they'll find you with one and then find you with the other. It might only be microseconds, but it's, it's going to be, there's going to be a gap there, generally. If not, what happens is if I try and grab with two hands, your two hands are free to deal with that. Okay, so if I come in with one and then come in with the other, that's going to be much more likely, in my opinion, anyway. Um, so the grabs come on, again we want to use our distraction technique, and we're going to basically execute the same technique. Yeah. Okay, so we have our distraction, hit down, hit up. Okay, so we get that bounce through. So again we have our cover, distraction, hits down, hits back up. So it's that distraction that's going to stop them putting you in. If Steve's attempt is to grab and pull me into a headbutt or bring me onto the knees, the first thing we do is try and lengthen the arms. And then we're going to come back in and back up, knees, etc. all from there. So we show that grabs come on, we grab a distraction, hit to the elbow crease, and then we're going to pop that strike back up into the head and neck line. We've also seen, as we did with the other one, you'll see it clearly on this side from our distraction, as we hit down into the elbow crease. This is tracking both hands, by the way. I'm going to bump my shoulder into their face. As their face moves away, head moves away, I'm going to come back into my rising lock position here. And again, I've got nice, strong attacking lines through the legs. Okay. Um, so that's from our double neck. Right. Drags come on, got our distraction. It's down into the elbow crease and the arms dropping across the body's midline. So look where my other hand is here now. I'm going to hit out and come through into my rising block this side. So now I'm on the outside of the leg so that I can buckle the knee this way. Okay, so we show you that again. So we've got the move from here and bang, that's my movement. This is to collapse the leg and this is that creating that counter torque through the body, through the spine to actually execute potential take. So we've got double grabs come on, we've got our distraction, we've hit down into the elbow crease, the arms slowly fold across the body, and we've come up through my anti this way. And again I'm behind his leg so I can collapse the leg and I'm just gonna force through, take him down. <laughs>